So one of the truly uh, remarkable parts of the series that I've been so looking forward to every single time uh, we get to have one of these concerts here at the house is getting to spend a little time with the artists hearing about their respective lives and their inspirations, their journey. Um, and so we are really incredibly fortunate and honored now to have both Camille Jones and Anthony Elliott join us on stage for a little intermission interview. Well, I think I certainly miss so much the interaction with my students because, um, you know, that's a very special bond when someone comes from a long distance away and uh, you become very strongly connected. Um, sometimes uh, uh, you, you have to figure out for each student that comes through the door, what is the way in which they learn and how it is the best way that you can possibly help them. And so you strike up a different type of a relationship with each student that you encounter. And uh, that's something that is a very close bond. And of course, I naturally miss that. And I miss the bond that I have with my uh, colleagues where I'm interacting with them on a daily basis. And, and usually, I'm, at the university, I was quite heavily involved in chamber music as well. Um, fortunately, I've been able to keep my uh, activities in performing going. Uh, some of you were here at a concert we had just a little while ago here at Carytown, and uh, there have been other concerts in the area and some out of town. So I'm so happy that we're finally coming out from the, the being locked up as we were for so long. It's important for musicians to be able to have the interaction of having a live audience feeling that feedback, feeling that energy, and responding to it. It's something that I know that we all certainly missed, and so thank you so much for being here tonight and, and enabling us to be able to, to have this. Some other questions that we have from out there? Uh, let's see, someone, uh, please. Well, I, I would have to say, I think one of the experiences that was most amazing to me was the very first time I had an opportunity to conduct the Sphinx Symphony at Orchestra Hall in Detroit, uh, because the Sphinx Symphony was completely comprised of African American and Latino musicians. And that was something that I had never encountered anything that was remotely like that. There was an orchestra called the Symphony of the New World that was run by Everett Lee and Dean Dixon for a time in New York City, but, uh, but the Sphinx Symphony was really something else again, and I think that for me was uh, such an important bond because I felt all of those people on that stage had an understanding of each other's experience the experience of being perhaps the lone person that studied that discipline in the area where they were, and also that sense of isolation and, and perhaps additional scrutiny that they would feel in a lot of situations when they were uh, performing. And the fact that there was that bond and that understanding right away was just an extraordinary uh, experience for me. Yes. Maury. Yes. The Harlem Renaissance and then reverberates. Is there a large musical and composer uh, component to it? Well, when I, th when I think of the Harlem Renaissance, Maury, the thing that comes to mind for me, of course, is, um, is jazz. You know, I, I, I think of, of jazz right away. And, I, and I, the reason is, of course, we've got documentation of some of the things that were happening during the Harlem Renaissance. There's this one incredible picture, for example, that has Count Basie, Duke Ellington, John Coltrane, just a, just a whole bunch of the great musicians of the day all seated together 
in front of, it, it's just the most amazing picture because anybody who was anybody at that time was in that picture. Um, now, a lot of the composers that um, came along a little bit later than that. There were some like Chevalier de Saint Georges, who was earlier, uh, Bridge Tower was earlier. But uh, I think of the, when I think Harlem Renaissance, I think of it primarily in association with, with, with jazz. Um, Florence Price, of course, came along, and also Margaret Bonds. Um, so there were people who were composing around that time, certainly. But I, I, when I think of the Renaissance, I think of jazz primarily. Well, I think it's time for some more music. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. 